the prime. Now that we have examined the history of the glyphs, let us turn to the individual components in detail so that we may better understand their nature and occult virtue. With an open heart and mind, we can perhaps come to understand why D claims that meditation upon the glyphs can reveal the thoughts of God. The circle is a perfect image of the infinite and the eternal. Nature reveals herself in circles throughout the cosmos, from the sun and moon and galaxies down to the lenses of our eyes, our blood cells, or even a single drop of water. It is one of a handful of universal symbols that have been with humankind since its earliest recollections and its representation of wholeness and totality is found in our mathematical symbol for zero, reminding us God is an infinite circle whose center is everywhere and circumference is nowhere. Numerical zero and the circle both represent the cosmic womb or matrix from which all manifests. It is the blank canvas upon which the Creator paints all of what we call reality. This emptiness is symbolic of the timeless and infinite part of us that is transcendent from the physical, that which does not die, known most commonly as the soul. The term soul can mean different things to different people according to their respective understandings. Between the term soul and spirit, there is often confusion or debate, and the terms are often interchangeable in our attempts to describe the essential part of us that transcends our bodies. Soul is the undying, infinite aspect of ourselves, or the indwelling God that created the cosmos. Spirit, as we shall see, shares the root of inspiration and refers to the invisible air and the nature of breath. It is the sheath in which the soul is enthroned, otherwise known as our spirit body, the subtle body, or the ghost of ourselves. As with the soul, Spirit is likewise ensheathed and grown within the physical body, although it is independent from it. While the soul is eternal, incorruptible, and infinite, the spirit, while far more enduring than the physical body as we understand it, can grow or dissipate. It can descend into hell realms or elevate into the sublime abodes of the heavenly one. Astrology is an art of time, so naturally the glyphic elements regard to time as well as place. In their Corpus Hermeticum, Hermes tells us, Time is like a circle, where all points are so linked that one cannot say where it begins or ends, for all points precede and follow one another forever. The twisting of the circle gives us the lemnisate, or the figure eight, which is more commonly known as the symbol for infinity. In three dimensions, this symbol is known as a tauros, not to be confused with the zodiac sign of Taurus the bull. The glyph for the sun is a circle with a center point, indicating a ray of light. It should come then as no surprise that the sun forms a lemnisate in the sky during its passage through the season. In three dimensions, the circle can also appear as a sphere. This shape mirrors the entirety of heaven, or the premium mobile, in which all of the stars, perfect spheres each, burn in their cosmic dance through the galaxy's perennial swirlings.
The crescent represents the separation required for the universe or its creator to experience itself, just as we require mirrors to see ourselves. For awareness or consciousness must be fractured in order to witness and ultimately return to itself, divided for the sake of union, as it were. The crescent is an obvious symbol for the moon, which, like a mirror, reflects the light of the sun. Unlike the self-contained circle, the crescent is open to influence, receptive and yielding. It is also the principle of growth and diminishment. Crescent literally means to grow, to swell or increase. All qualities attributed to the moon as it waxes and wanes through the night sky. It is said to accumulate and dissipate not only light, but spiritual essence. This is the underlying principle behind the idea of sowing seeds in the dark of the moon so that germination occurs during the increasing effulgence of Diana's mirror. In this way, we can see the crescent and the moon as significators for the flux and reflux of the cycles of time in partnership with the cycle of the sun, the big hand to the moon's little hand, both founded upon the eternal now represented by the circle of soul. Spirit and breath are unified in nature spirit literally meaning breath and it is from spirit that we get the act of breathing or inspiration which is also a state of enchantment or spiritual influence that provokes action or creation usually with marvelous effect one is inspired to practice magic and astrology for example the phenomenon known as the light body, astral double, or the spirit body is in direct relation to what is called prana to the Indians or chi amongst the Asians. It is our life force and substance of the subtle astral or spirit bodies that transcend the physical. This spirit body, like the moon, can grow or diminish, and this is in direct correlation to the quality and quantity of one's breathing. Through breath, the spirit body can be elevated upwards to the heavenly soul, or it can be poured out into the world below, much like our efforts can go to creation or destruction, depending on our perceptions and choices. While the circle becomes the torus, or the sphere, in three dimensions, the crescent becomes the logarithmic spiral, or the coil. It is most easy to see in certain geometric patterns, but we will experience it as the enduring cycles of time, which do not revolve in perfect circles, but are spirals, and with the periodic return of planets to their respective places may bring a familiarity, but not perfect repeats of the past. As Mark Twain said, history does not repeat, but it does rhyme. In the arts of Tantra and Kriya Yoga, it is taught that within our body is a powerful, even volatile force of spiritual transformation known as kundalini. Kundalini means spiral or coiled as it lays coiled at the base of the spine. Through spirit cultivation methods of yoga, ceremonial magic, or blessings of God, one can awaken this dormant force and raise it through the spine into the brain and beyond. When united with the crown, 
the aspirant achieves enlightenment or samadhi and begin to perfect their spirit body so that it is elevated beyond the tendency of entropy and decay, the fundamental challenges of material incorporeal life, otherwise known as the mortal coil. The cross of matter, or the cross of elements, represents the physical material world. It is the basic elementary building blocks of the phenomenal world as well as the space in which they affect and interplay with one another. Fire, for example, must have fuel of the earth and air in order to burn. Water must be heated to evaporate and turn into clouds, providing rain. The soul, too, requires a space in which to interact in the dynamic play of the manifest. For the soul to fully experience itself and the material world, to grow the spirit and to experience time, it must be fixed in solid matter. This experience can often be painful or burdensome and results in the physical death, leading some to consider the world a kind of spiritual prison. Another word for this space of fixity is the crucible which is rooted in the word crucifixion. This is the alchemical oven in which gold is produced from lead, a metaphor of the spiritual transformation that occurs within us in our experience of the world and its evolutionary pressure. The cross has four points, just as Dee's hieroglyphic monad has four parts, a quaternary. Four is said to be a perfect number and the Pythagoreans thought it represented God, a theme later repeated by the Kabbalists who saw both the universe to be divided into four worlds of emanation and God's name being made of four letters. This quaternary is given many attributions from the elements to the four directions, four seasons, four angels, four rivers of Eden, four noble truths of Buddhism, and many other attributions from cultures worldwide. In three dimensions, the square becomes the cube. It represents the third dimension itself made up of space, length, width, depth, and height. Just as the elemental cross relates to earth, the cube represents solidity and fixity, as it is not capable of rotation as our spheres, which, like the circle or sphere of soul, it contains. This defined fixed space is a limiting agent that allows the one thing to manifest in the universe, to experience polarity and to grow and flourish from it. In here, the four elements come alive, descending from the realm of the ideal to interact with one another in what we experience as physical existence. The cube is equal to the similarly cube-shaped grains of salt. Besides the use of salt in alchemical operations, it is prominent in magic and religion in cleansing rituals. Taking something with a grain of salt is an admonition to be grounded in one's belief of a thing, to be patient and discerning. This ideal reveals a linkage between truth and purity, which the cross or crucible produces through trials. In the Kabbalistic book, the Sefer Yetzirah, there are instructions on how to formulate a cube of perfect proportions using the 22 Hebrew letters. Each of the 22 Hebrew letters have correspondences to numerology, astrology, the elements, and the tarot, all foundational elements of the Hermetic Kabbalah, and this same map of the universe was revitalized and brought to the West by the Hermetic Kabbalist Lodge known as the Builders of Adidam. 
Outside of the Hermetic Kabbalah, the cube of space, or cube of creation, is a Masonic icon of the soul in which one polishes the raw, untouched stone into a perfect cube. Returning to the cross of matter, we find a hidden light. With creative vision, we can draw three letters from the cross, L, V, and X, or lux, literally light, and the shining radiance of the sun, or the soul, that is fixed upon the cross of matter. This hidden light brings us to a second manifestation of the cross in three dimensions. For those with eyes to see, the cube hides a secret, as with the light of the cross from the cube extends the shining radiance of a star. The hexagon, or six-rayed star, is most commonly associated with Judaism, although it's used by Christians, Shivite Hindus, Tantric Yogis, and appears often in ceremonial magic of the Grimoires, the Rosicrucians, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and the magic of Thelema. The six points correspond to the six planets, with the sun in the center point. It unifies opposites as well as the elements and is also a kind of cosmological map of its own used to allocate the days of creation in Genesis and other mystical ideas. With creative imagination, we can find that the glyphs themselves are made up of our most basic building blocks of our cosmos. The earth, or the cross, is paired with the heavens themselves, the sun, or the circle of soul, the moon, or the crescent of spirit, and through the hidden aspects of the cross and its three-dimensional cube, we find also the stars. Hidden behind all this is Saturn, the midnight sun, who is associated with the black cube and materiality in general, and he rules the sign of Aquarius, which represents the stars of heaven. It is something of a counterintuitive link between inner and outer, the solid darkness of earth and the luminosity of heaven. On a personal level, the cross, the cube, and Saturn represent the work of material life, burdens that through endurance help us reveal our true self, realize our deepest potential, and elevate our spirit and soul. This fire is unique to alchemy and Dee's hieroglyphic monad. In modern times, the fourth component glyph is represented as an arrow, if it's regarded at all, and more often the cross of earth is manipulated to become the arrow, which is used in the glyph for planetary Mars and occasionally Uranus. This is no ordinary fire, but what Dee calls the Aries fire, or the universal flame, a cosmic alchemical substance key in the work of alchemy. Typically, it is Mercury who is used in the transmutive process, but in Dee's schema, it is Mercury who is the thing transmuted and it is the Aries fire which causes the transmutation to take place. The glyph, made of two crescents, symbolize the ram horns, or the arched leaves of seedlings breaking through the earth, and marks the time of spring equinox, when the sun returns with its warm effulgence, causing the land to once again germinate and grow. The arrow shows outward movement and momentum. Typically, the arrow appears with the glyph from Mars and symbolizes his shield and spear. In this way, we can understand the aggressive, goal-seeking nature of Mars. This arrow can also be interpreted 
as the arrow of time in the sense of linearity and a forward movement through time. This movement and the pursuit of form itself has been associated with eros. Just as we desire a mate in order to reproduce, we desire other things in the world, lust for power, for example. This linearity brings a diminished or total lack of awareness of events outside the present moment. Memories fade and are forgotten, and the future is often seen only through a glass darkly. Ignorance of the future timelines and events keep us locked in the present moment and in a state of both wonder and desire. Like the soul's fixation upon the cross of matter, it is a necessary limit which allows us the opportunity to grow and change. Desire is a word associated not only with Mars, but also the stars in general. The word is from the Latin desidere, or of or from the stars, reminding us of our earnest prayers to the night sky, sometimes literally wishing upon a star. In three dimensions, the arrow becomes the tetrahedral pyramid and is like the Aries horns, symbolic of elemental fire. Pyramid means literally fire in the middle, and its mysteries are as profound as the ghostly remnants of the sun-bleached pyramids of Giza. The pyramids are universal icons for the everlasting wisdom that descends from the divine field, a measureless eternity best symbolized by the very heavens above us. And in its descent, it has entombed itself in the enigmatic remnants of man's long forgotten past. So old and fearless against the howling winds of the ages that those who look upon them realize only man fears time, and time fears the pyramid.